I made a whole plate of food. I was heating up some food. <sighs> Which Retro went to go get some milk. Uh huh. Right, and then. And FedEx was cool enough to eventually return the packages. So both Tracy and Phyllis got all their money back. Phyllis. And when the scammers angrily called Tracy back asking why the package didn't arrive, she explained she accidentally selected two day shipping instead of next day air so they would get the package tomorrow. And that's where we switched from defense to a very light offense. And so the next day, we delivered the package in an official looking vest. Have a good holiday. All right, you too. Thank you. And waited for the sweet retribution. Hello. You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. But for the first time in three years of glitter bombing criminals, someone didn't immediately throw the box outside and he just sat there with the wretched smell leaving the box untouched. And then as we waited, wondering what his game plan was gonna be, suddenly a bunch of NYPD officers started showing up and it didn't take them long to figure things out. It's a glitter bomb, it has a camera built into it. <laughs> There's a camera built into this. We had a phone number on the box and they called us up and I explained the whole situation. And I'll just say there was some mutual admiration for each other's work. I mean, there might be cameras on there, officer. And as it happens, the reason a scammer would call the cops on himself is because he isn't a scammer. This is Gary. And it turns out he's a super nice guy. But Gary runs an Airbnb. And once you go in that door, there are two rooms upstairs that he rents out to people. So this wasn't a safe house at all. These scammers would use Airbnb to get a temporary address they would only use once. But if that's true, that meant the scammers must have been there yesterday. So Gary showed us his security footage and we saw this woman in an orange jacket who appeared right as the PI was talking with the FedEx driver up the street. She also looks directly at the camera and then decides it's probably cold enough outside to zip her jacket all the way up. Once the FedEx truck passes and she realizes he skipped by her, she hurries over to talk to him and when he told her he had nothing for her for that day, she walks right back to her car, never stepping foot inside the Airbnb. The PI's got all the license plates on the street that day and it turns out her name is Crystal. You should remember that name for later. So then Gary showed us who booked the room it was this guy from Utah with a brand new account and zero reviews. In fact, when the reservation was booked, he sent this message in awkward English at 3.06 a.m., which happens to be just after lunch in India. So I did some more research and learned that after the scammer in India found a willing victim, they would use a money mule and have the victim send the cash there. So Crystal, in this case, was the mule. But instead of sending the package to the money mule's house, they use an Airbnb. Then the mule gives the package to a supervisor who deposits the cash and why wire transfers the remaining money back to the scammer. And they must have got spooked because Crystal was long gone the next day, which meant we caught poor Gary in the crossfire. But he wanted them caught just as much as us, so we compensated him handsomely just for being cool about everything. So we'll call that round a tie. We stopped the scammers from receiving two packages containing $30,000, but they were still glitter free. But before I show you exactly how we tip the scales in our favor, let me explain exactly how this scam works so well at tricking so many people. There's an email that goes along with the scam that basically says the same thing as the robocall, which is Amazon just charged you $200, but if you don't recognize this charge, please call right away to have it refunded. So when you call, they say, I'd be happy to walk you through the refund process on your computer. So just type this here and simply install this, and then I'll be able to fully help you out. And most victims don't really comprehend they've just installed a remote software program that gives the scammers full access to their computer. Now they're ready for the scam. They tell her that some accounts have actually already had their refunds automatically processed, so she needs to check her bank account to make sure the $200 refund isn't already there. And when Bessie here asks if he can see her banking info, he explains in technical terms. It's a 3D page, so I cannot see anything. Oh, oh, okay. And so sure enough, she hasn't got the refund yet, so he needs just about five minutes to work with his billing department in order to process it. But first, he makes a really big deal about this. I'm signing out from your account in front of your own eyes. And this is true, he actually does sign out at which point he triggers her screen to go black so she can't see anything that he's doing. And then he immediately logs back in using the browser, pre-stored username and password. He's gonna do a simple browser HTML edit on this page to temporarily make this Lowe's purchase look like a refund for $20,000. And you'll see why in a minute. And as he's editing away, he chats her up to try and build trust. You're like my granny, Miss Bessie, do you know this? Yes. 
he's yo these guys these guys are ruthless come on dude she was he just got to go to inspect elements and remember how people used to, to meme and troll with the pewdiepie shit where they'd be like yo give pewdiepie infinite subscribers and you just change the number with the inspect element shit like one of my closest f i used to share each and everything with her you mean like what you do for a living. And you might be wondering, why doesn't he just wire transfer himself money while he has unrestricted access to her account? But the problem there is that it's traceable and it would likely get flagged by the bank's fraud detection system anyways. But if you can get an old lady to mail you cash, it's so untraceable, the authorities don't even begin to try and track it down. Now that he's finished, he unblinks her screen and he informs her that unfortunately, the billing department couldn't process the refund, so they have one last option to try. This is the Chase online refund server. It's actually just a text window that does absolutely nothing. It Fucking cap, dude. I remember these motherfuckers one time called me and they were like, we work for Microsoft. Bro, I was like, shut your bitch ass up. Then they changed the story and then they were like, oh no, I'm Microsoft licensed. I'm like, yo, if you don't shut your fucking ass up, you do not work for Microsoft. Shut your ass up, dude. Oh, I'm Microsoft certified. Like, that's basically like, hey, I know how to use fucking Microsoft Office. So you get a little certification saying that you're Microsoft Office savvy. And then they try to use that certification to be like, oh, I work for Microsoft. Get the fuck out of here. It's pure theater. It is an irreversible form. Whatever you are typing it over there, put it in a correct manner. Nothing would be changed over here. Basically, he makes a big deal for three minutes that she's the one that has to enter all the information and anything that gets typed there is immediately permanent. Maybe you can see where this is headed. So her name, last four social, zip code, and finally refund amount. Please we need to do a scam amount. call stream, bro. Chat, do you all want this If you go back, too? you can actually hear him type the two extra zeros on his keyboard and hit enter. Check everything, is it correct? Oh no, this is a mistake. Oh, I screwed up. Oh, I, Jesus. I it was supposed to be a, a oh, 200 Christ. in there. Oh, oh God, God almighty. I'm exhausted. I can't do this. My mind is Ma, absolutely please fried. Please check your account. Did you really receive that money in your account? Oh my God. Plus 20,000. Yeah. Please. Ah, uh, why would you do that to her, dude? Why would you do that to her? Save my job, ma'am. If I'll not earn for my family, my family will die due to hunger, due to starvation. Ah, you motherfucker. You motherfucker. Yes, yes of course. I mean, Please what should I do? I mean, I can... Feeling bad for you. you are also like my grandmother. You know, I'm, I'm an honest person. You are person. making me I, cry I'm... now. You are making me cry now. You are... I'm getting attached to you. Now, how do I fix this? He tells her that unfortunately mailing a check or wiring money would just take- They literally not. tried this shit with my granny by faking as our Comcast service provider saying there was refund that needed process on her account. I woke up mad early just to stop her from going any further. No, that's the thing too. I tell my parents all the time. I was like, yo, don't fall for this shit. If anybody's ever asking for information over the phone, hang the fuck up. Hang the fuck up. I be telling him. Take too long, so he needs to think for a minute. And then he comes back with this. Hello, Miss Bessie? Yes. I got an option. And you can see now how he's got her to the point where she's totally willing to send $20,000 in the mail and shit. to lie to I folks at the bank or FedEx or even grave. her family who might try and stop it. In her mind, she messed well, up. For the and because she's a good, and empathetic Adi. person, she'll go through great lengths to make it right for someone she doesn't realize is a heartless scammer. And on top of weaponizing their empathy, maintaining pressure on their victim is a key tactic. They keep them on the phone the whole time, even as they drive to the bank, or they yell at them. Go to the UPS, why don't you go to the UPS? Or call this many times in a row. And if you've ever seen this clip. Name a woman. Name a woman? Yeah. <laughs> um. You already know when you're under extreme stress, it's an actual biological response for the part of our brain that does critical thinking to just shut down. Why yes, is this so hard? Name a woman. Once they're back from the bank with the cash, they <laughs> Name a woman.
coach them through packing it. In Tracy's case, they had her put $100 bills in the pages of a book so it couldn't be detected in the mail. In other cases, they have the victims wrap the cash in saran wrap so the dogs can't sniff it, and then foil so it can't be x-rayed. And unfortunately, there's a small portion of the population that are just too trusting for their own good. And sadly, it's nearly always older folks. So for the scammers, it's just a game of percentages to find them. According to data, Jim has gathered from the scammer's own computers in one shift. Bro, it's like, I don't know how boomers fall for this shit. The second somebody on the phone is saying, put a hundred dollar bills in a book and then saying, yo, put aluminum foil around the book. <laughs> I would have been like, yeah, okay. Like, like that's so many red flags, like right in your face. And, and you'd be like, I, I trust it. I trust the process. If a call center like this with about 25 employees will send out a half a million robocalls. They'll get about 500 calls back and land maybe five to 10 victims like Bessie or Tracy or Phyllis. And Fuck these bitches because they're the same motherfuckers that call me all the time. And whenever they call me, I, I fucking ruin their day. Every time they call me, I start. I, I purposely sound like an old woman, and then they hang up on me. I don't know how the fuck they found out, because I feel like I have a really good old woman voice. Like if they call me, they'd be like, "Hello, um, uh, there's something wrong with your Amazon account." My Amazon account? Oh God damn it! Oh, my name is Toad. <laughs> Imagine if I switch out of Super Mario Toad. Oh, sir, I wanna fuck you. Oh. And speaking of Phyllis, after we got FedEx to send back her package, I was able to get in touch with her son, and I found out her husband of 40 years had passed away the very week she was being scammed of her life savings. Aww. The scammers knew she was mourning this loss, but once you're scammed, your phone number is really valuable because it means you're an easy mark. So they sold her info to other scammers, and she was scammed twice more the same week her husband died. And as hard as it was for me to even hear a backstory like Damn. that, it just made me that much more motivated to seek some glitter bomb retribution for all the Phyllis's out there, and perhaps in the process, we might stumble upon some good information that we could pass on to the authorities. So now we needed another scammer to send a glitter bomb to, but we decided when Jim spots a scam in progress, it's better for him just to stop it cold and not stress out the victim any more than they already are. So we reached out to our friend Pierogi from the YouTube channel Dream Scammer Payback, because whenever Pierogi gets a scam call to his actual phone, he turns on his cameras, makes his voice sound like an old lady, and has some fun. They will ask you when you bank like why you are withdrawing that this much of cash what are you gonna tell them um i'm getting it for derek wilson from microsoft no no mom no you need to tell them that you are withdrawing the cash for your personal reason for your personal reason and it didn't take long for fake victim old woman progi to get us an address in new jersey Is this where i'm sending it yeah. to right grab the box right so you can put the cash yeah i've already got a box i already got a box it's big enough this one was actually to a hotel and not an airbnb but as soon as we pulled up once again a money mule is out there waiting for us for Jack, sir. Hey, this is on here so they took the package yeah, and drove around for a couple of hours, and when it was clear they weren't going to open it, we made the call just to get the box back before the batteries died, and then maybe the box audio recording might help us piece together more info on the scam. You guys picked up a box from FedEx today, part of a scam? I didn't have no scam going on today. Oh, really? No. Let's see the box. I just was told I understand. by somebody to pick this up for them. I understand. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'm being honestly and truthfully, and I don't want no trouble. And when I first heard that, I was like, oh, well, now I feel bad. Sometimes these mules don't even realize the they're cap. participating in scams, and they might even be victims themselves. But then I was like, look, not that I don't believe her, but maybe just in case. Nah, stop the cap, dude, because cause you wouldn't just be picking up somebody's package for no reason. There's something in it for you as well. We just have a little peek at the audio. I don't even want so many packages. <laughs> I don't even know which one is which anymore. Then she got on the phone with her boss, James. Yeah, I know. I got one with me right now. I took the picture I sent it to you. I'm going to bring it to you. And that's what I'm saying. He said that I was done for the day. What I got to be at tomorrow if you said that we was working out here in New Jersey? I don't know. Wherever they give me an address that they don't even have a B&B &B address or nothing for tomorrow. This is the first time they split me and Crystal up like this in, in New Jersey. Crystal. That's right, Crystal. Apparently they're a team, which means Jacqueline was probably in the car the other day in New York. Any other time she in a car watching me. Damn, By the they way, Crystal, that bitch in 4K. To say it, but Jacqueline was talking a lot of trash about you. In fact, I'd watch your back, because her cousin in the car that day might be gunning for your job. I'm gonna be a driver, how much you think it paid? How much you get for that one bar store? Everybody get paid, see. So if we get seven partials, 
and it's seventy-five dollars or a hundred dollars for each parcel. Hey, right. Everybody's getting seven hundred dollars. You're gonna be back and forth. You're gonna be eating Florida, Delaware, and Maryland. You're gonna be here, there, 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 there. So you'll be what? You're going to be in Florida or Delaware? Bro, those locations is kind of far. Are they paying for those locations for me? Looking like you on vacation, having a time in your life. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'm being honest. We learned two key things here. The first is that a supervisor will have multiple mules reporting to them who apparently get flown all over the country and just one mule could receive as many as seven packages in a day. And the second is that this address was from a totally different call center in India. So that same supervisor can work with multiple unrelated scammers as well. And so in the spirit of avenging Phyllis, if we were gonna glitter bomb and fart spray anyone here in the States, we really wanted it to be a supervisor. And thanks to Pierogi, no not long today. after, mm -hmm. we would get another chance. Uh, get the $50,000 in cash with you, get in your car, once you're in your car, let me know. Make sure you don't involve any third person, nobody. So I don't need to tell my husband? Your husband, your father, anyone. This one would be in Illinois. And the delivery address this time was to a Walgreens. It was interesting to see them experimenting with different package drop-off methods. And right away, we heard some good news. You get the gas station Yeah, I see you, I see you. Come park in front of me. And the, black one. the Walgreens was here, and the handoff occurred here at this gas station. And with that, we had our supervisor. They tell the supervisor for a few minutes. And <laughs> Come on, man. It should have been a PlayStation trophy, really? An achievement on Lockmouth? And got a good look at his 2019 white Honda Passport. And then 20 minutes later, he stopped here in a seemingly random parking lot and opened it. Hello! And even though he kept it by his feet, the cameras got a perfect shot of his face here. And the PIs assessed the situation and felt safe enough to approach him right after he opened it, but then he took off. And they let him go, and we just used the GPS and the glitter bombs to once again locate it in the ditch snow. And right after that, Progi got this message from the scammer in India, which shows two things. The supervisor and scammer are in close contact with each other, and neither one likes glitter. And that seemed like the end of the story, until we ran the plates and realized his name was tied to a business really close to where he opened the box. So we went back a week later to get footage to show just how close. Here's where he opened it. You can see that dumpster and house for reference. And then you pan over, and that's the business his name is tied to. And wait a second, that's a 2019 Honda Passport. And wait another second, that's the same guy whose face is on camera opening the glitter bomb. So this was a nice little package of intel we were able to hand off to the authorities because the supervisor is sort of the hub and a direct connection between a bunch of mules in the States and a bunch of scammers in India. Perugia came through with one final address in Texas, and this one was back to the MO of being delivered to an Airbnb. And like all the others, the mule's right there waiting for us, and then she took it inside to open it. Hello! You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. Notice how she films herself opening the package. Apparently this is pretty common because I suppose there's no honor among thieves and the scammers will demand the video to confirm she hasn't taken more than she's allowed. As we learned before, the money mules make a flat amount per package, like a hundred bucks. But I ended up reading somewhere that the supervisor gets a 10% cut and sends the rest back to the scammers. This lady later admitted she herself was exchanging the cash for Bitcoin to send back to the scammers, which meant she was actually a supervisor. And for the sake of Phyllis, that was a lovely surprise. Here's the package, maybe in motion as well. She took off and parked about a mile away, but the police were alerted and were on her tail pretty quickly. Shit. Oh, you have your ID on you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I cannot park here. I love that attempt at just getting away with the parking warning. So she gets out of the car, and I have to applaud the effort here, but as every parent knows, the only way she's getting rid of the evidence from her pants and car is by burning them both to the ground. Well, you got all the glitter on your pants for it. Yeah, so I just... <laughs> Uh, lawyer, because I, I'm uh, in the probation, call my probation officer. I don't know what's happened. Okay. So I want to contact with uh, 
And so after she was taken into custody, the police returned to the Airbnb to gather evidence. The dude on the left there is a detective, and they already had her under investigation for another package scam. So now they're bringing charges against her, and the actual glitter bomb and footage is being held as evidence in the case. We did one more in Illinois and two more in California, but I've decided against showing those because those scammers are being monitored as part of ongoing investigations. In fact, over the past four months, Jim, Pierogi, and I have been in contact with investigators from the respective local police departments, the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, and the FBI. And we've turned over to them every last bit of evidence we've stumbled upon. So hopefully like me, Shit. you now have a better understanding of how these scam calls operate. And here's why that matters. The authorities are cracking down more on these guys, both here in the States and in India, but it's sort of a game of whack. You know what? I've realized I've had a big like decrease in scam calls because like before, Last year, the scam calls were like at an all time high on my ass. But recently, I haven't been receiving as much scam calls. This guy's doing God's work. And another one will just pop up because the financial incentives are so great. The only way to truly defeat this is by spreading awareness, thereby making it ineffective. So if you have someone in your life who's older, that means a lot to you, please educate them or even share this video with them. I put some resources in the video description if you've been exposed to fraud, but all the experts agree it's much better to not be reactive here, but proactive by spreading awareness and understanding what this looks like. And speaking of being proactive, I will close with some good news, which is that thanks to Jim who explains how he did it in a video he just released on his channel. We have the identifying information of the folks over in India who scammed our girl Phyllis. And by the way, everyone in India hates these guys too. And so over the next year, of course, working with the proper authorities, we'll be executing a multi-phased operation that will be, as always, relatively harmless. And I don't want to give too much away, but we already have some informants working for us in some of these call centers. And the I know it sounds fucked up, but just deliver them. Not a big C4. <sighs> I can't say that. I can't say that. For, for, forget what I said. Just this is watch. The first video. phase might include a door handle and actual poop from Phyllis's actual dog. So make sure you're subscribed. Phyllis, because it's poop? gonna be a banger. You could set your plant on this box and it has some electronics inside to measure the soil moisture level and then talk to you when you walk hey, by. I need a little water over here. That's. Bro, the plant could fucking talk to me? How, Sway? Delicious. Thank you. And this machine measures how long it's been since you've stood up and employs the kid sitting behind you on a long flight method to encourage a stretch break. This is a game to motivate exercise during a lockdown, and this is a secret safe for your most valuable possessions. And finally, this is a G-Dang Lunchables assembly line. Are you kidding me? And what do all of those have in common? They were created by people who took my month-long creative engineering course. I just launched this class for the first time a few months ago, and it was so freaking rewarding to see what everybody learned and created as a result. For the most part. That's cool. And because we got so much overwhelmingly positive feedback on the course, we're doing it again. You could sign up for it now. This class covers my full engineering design process, all the way from- That sounds so cool. I don't know, man. Like, he teaches you a whole engineering course? That sounds really interesting. Now I come up with an idea, to prototyping, to finalizing the build and giving it character. I show you everything that I'm thinking, everything that I'm doing, and I do it three times. Over the course of a month, you're gonna watch me design and create three totally original builds, and I'm gonna guide you through finishing three creative builds of your own. And this is an online class, so you can take it from anywhere and work it around your schedule, but it's fully immersive and intensive. So whether you're a working professional or you're taking the class as a family, whether you're a complete beginner or an experienced engineer, this class has been designed to meet you where you're at and then level up your That's very cool. I feel like if I feel like if you're very interested in, in like engineering and obviously you're young, like super young and you have the time, this would be very beneficial for you. Then you're gonna end up beastly like that one guy on um the one guy on Twitch from from the TV house that Pokimane is in, that really smart ass kid that, that that makes all the cool ass inventions, you could be like him. I would love how to like fuck around with circuit boards and shit. That sounds like fun. Yes, Michael Reeves. That guy's a fucking monster. Great video. Great great video. I love it. Two plus two is four. Minus one. That's three quick maths. Everyday man's on the block. Smoke trees.